In this video, let's take a look at the many ways you can optimize your Adobe Muse sites to improve your ranking with search engines like Google, Bing, and Yahoo using keywords, tagging, web fonts, and sitemap generation. Let's go ahead and get started in the Adobe Muse application. So I'm working here on the Katie's Cafe website. I've gone in and done the full design, and I want to start thinking now about my search engine optimization. The first thing I want to do is look at keywords and page titles in my sitemap structure here. So what I can do is come to individual pages. I'm going to start with my welcome landing page. And if I bring up the right mouse menu, I can select page properties. In the page properties panel, there's three different tabs. If I click on the metadata tab, I have the ability to come in and define a description for my website or this individual web page. I also can define keywords. Now keywords are the words that viewers of the website are going to type into the browser that you'll want them to then result in your website in the keyword search. So if you'll notice the description here, when I go into Google Chrome in this example and I search for a bakery, Noe Valley Bakery basically, notice how when Katie's Cafe comes up here, it includes the description. So just here we've got Katie's Cafe and the description that I've defined. So that comes directly from this description field here. As I mentioned, the keywords are what people are going to search for that you want the result to be about your site. I'll go ahead and click OK there because that's in good shape. Now I'm going to want to go in and set the keywords for each individual page. If I make them different, it's probably going to help a little bit. So for example, on the menu page, I probably would talk more about the specific food that's served up. On the um, contact page, I might add different keywords that might include more about where the location for Katie's Cafe is. Another way you want to try to uh, make sure that you're in good shape with search engine optimization is in the way that you name your pages. If I come to that first page again and bring up Page Properties, under the Layout tab, actually the Options tab, um, you'll notice I have a page name and a page title. I also have a file name that's here, and this is true for each page in the site. If I hit Cancel for a second, I'm going to go into my master page, my main master page, and go to those page properties. If I click on the metadata tab, what you'll notice is that I've defined a page title suffix. It helps if you echo the name of the company in your page title. So I have it as a suffix. That way it'll show to the back end of the page title and it won't interfere in the tabs with the main name, but it's got a space, a bar, and then the Katie's Bakery Cafe. That's one good thing. The next one is in my page properties. Let's go to the second page here. I want to make sure that I'm echoing that name. So as I, if I have Katie's Cafe and I have menu in my page title name and my actual file name here, that will let the search engine know that it actually relates, that the keywords are related to the actual content on the site. All right, next thing you want to focus on has to do with the types of fonts that you're using. So Muse supports web fonts, web safe fonts, and system fonts, or desktop fonts as they're known. You want to really try to stick with web fonts and web safe fonts if at all possible. And the reason for that is that this will remain as text in the HTML, which means a search engine or a screen reader is going to be able to search the content of your page. Now if for some reason you really need to use a typeface that's not available as a web safe font, you can pretty much rest assured that your SEO will remain intact. What Muse will do is for any of those system fonts, we'll render them as an image because they're not available in a web form, but we'll also make sure to create alternate text or an alt tag, which will make sure that that title is included in the HTML for the search engine. In that same way that we do that for system fonts, we do it with images. So let's say I have an image here, and this has to do with breast cancer research, and it's a, a fundraiser. And I want to make sure that that's called out. For any image that I paid, paste in the site, I can right mouse there and go to Edit Image Properties. And in the alternative text area here, I'm going to make sure I identify this image. So it might be uh, Katie's
So I've got the Katie's Breast Cancer Awareness Fundraiser tag that's describing what that image is about. So tagging all of your images, always a great idea. Another good area that you want to focus on has to do with the structure of your site, its hierarchical structure, and defining importance for that search engine. So if you look at this site, I've got a, a certain structure to it, and it's kind of reflected in my typography. You've got the title of the page, Welcome to Katie's Cafe. You've got a subhead or a subtitle. I've got another subhead here, Join the Cause. And then I've got body text. When I define my typographic elements in Muse, if I tie them to what's known as P tags or H1 tags, it's going to allow an engine that can't see that hierarchical difference in the design to understand the hierarchical structure of the page. So I've already done this as well. If I click on Welcome to Katie's Cafe, you can see in my paragraph styles, that is a heading um, style that I've defined. If I double click on it, you'll notice that I have the ability to associate a P tag or a paragraph tag with that style. So anything that's a headline on the page, it's going to not only be large and in that larger font, but it's also going to be tagged as a headline for search engine optimization. If I hit cancel here and go down to, let's say, join the cause, that also has a style called subhead. If I double click, I can see it's an H2, where it's the second most important information on the page. The search engines will see that as I work. So you'll want to make sure you tag all of those. If you don't want to use paragraph styles, that's OK. You can come into the text panel and come in and define those P tags sort of on the fly as you're designing out your structure. So with all of that done, the next thing that's important is to just be aware of the fact that Muse is going to take care of something known as a site map. So when you're done designing your site, you're going to FTP up to a hosting platform or perhaps save it out to a folder and use your own FTP client to um, upload the site content. I've gone into this site and I've pulled down on file to export as HTML to a folder because I want to show you the site structure related to this particular site. So if I go out into the Finder, this is the exported instance of the Katie's Cafe website, and there's all the usual HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But notice that we also create a sitemap.xml. If I go ahead and reveal the details there, you can see that the sitemap has a hierarchical structure of the site. It's revealing all of the names associated with individual pages in the site, and it's the sitemap that a search engine like Google search engine can crawl and keep an eye on the content and make sure that's valid. So in order to really tie that together, you're going to want to go to the Google Webmaster Tools and point to this sitemap once you've published the site live, just for that handshake between that search engine and your actual live site. So by taking a little extra time to optimize your Adobe Muse sites, you can easily improve your search engine ranking. I encourage you to give it a try.